Today brings with it not only rain, but some full specs for the upcoming RX 470 and RX 460 graphics cards from, of course, AMD. And we also have some performance metrics to go with them as well. So let's begin with the RX 470. This is the second Polaris 10 board with four compute units disabled. That said, there are still 32 compute units and 2048 stream processors in total. The GPU also has 128 TMUs or texture, texture mapping Unix as well as 32 ROPs. As for the clock speed it is 926 MHz boosting up to 1206 MHz. This basically gives you a maximum compute performance of 4.9 TFLOPs. According to the information that will be sort of speckled throughout the video, the 470 will be available with 4GB of GDDR5 memory, but AIBs may offer 8GB variants if they so desire. The bandwidth is 211GB per second thanks to a full 256-bit interface as well as a 650MHz memory clock. For those of you wondering about power concerns, the typical board power is 120 watts, whereas the 480 has 150, which basically means, in theory, it should be enough to have a single 6-pin power connector. AMD are touting the R70 as bringing quote-unquote brilliant HD gaming, so this seems to be just aiming at a solid 1080p with good frame rates. And further, according to AMD, it should be 1.5 to 2.4 times faster than the R7270. That is in certain games, of course. Let's move swiftly on, shall we, to the 460, which AMD are touting for eSports gaming. It should be 1.2 to 1.3 times faster than the R7-260X in games such as, say, Dota 2, Overwatch, Rocket League, Counter-Strike Go, and GTA 5, apparently. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the difference mainly between the RX 460, the RX 480, and of course the RX 470? And the main difference between the 460 and the 480 slash 470 is the graphics processor. The 460 has Polaris 11, which is Baffin, which has 14 compute units, about 896 stream processors, 48 TMUs, and 16 ROPs. The, ba the base clock, excuse me, is 190 MHz with a boost clock of 1200 MHz, which basically gives you a maximum compute performance of 2.2 TFLOPs. There will be two available variants of the card, both are GDDR5, but they will be 2GB and 4GB, and the memory bus is 128 bit, which will give you a bandwidth of 112GB per second. Now what's really interesting is that at least on the reference design that AMD have here is the lack of power connectors. This basically means that, in theory, it, the card would be powered only through the PCIe interface. Now the exact TD TBP is not mentioned, but it is below 75 watts. Now obviously this is for the reference design, so you may see some variations there from other manufacturers, but at least for the AMD reference, there are no power connectors. It is only through PCIe, as I just mentioned. Now what interests me is the choice of wording for the 460 that it's designed for esports gaming. Now of course esports is a huge thing, especially on the big games such as say League and Dota, and of course we have several other popular games like you know Hearthstone, StarCraft 2, Overwatch of course is becoming more of a thing. I was very tempted to um, go to the European you know, sort of open invitationals where you can like just sign up, but I was like, yeah, maybe I'm not that good. <laughs> But still, obviously, AMD are targeting cards at people who are like, hey, I, I really want to get into esports, you know, I want to play these games and you know, practice and get really good, and this is a very, you know, fairly low power, in, in theory, cheap card that will, you know, sort of lower the barrier to entry to a bit to get solid performance on these games. And obviously, when you're doing sort of esports or practicing for esports or just professional gaming in general, you want as high a frame rate as you can get. It's not good to be dropping frames at all when that is, of course, going to impact your performance in the game. So it's interesting that they're choosing to target that. Of course, it's kind of the theme with the sort of 460, 470, 480 range is that low cost for high performance to lower that barrier to entry to PC gaming, which is definitely something I love. And I've said this on the podcast multiple times that a friend of mine was saying that they wanted to 
to get into PC gaming after they've moved house? Would I help them with their setup? And to be honest, I'm probably going to be recommending like the, the 470 or the 480, because while well, they're really cheap for the performance that you get. So, yeah. Some solid uh, specs there from AMD. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.